بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون صدق الله العظيم Turkey The year of 1929 Trabzon A city of the Black Sea polluating with scholars and a source of friends of Allah In a village called Tavshanla, in the township of Of, one father's prayers were accepted, and one mother's dream came true. After many years without children, Ali Effendi and Fatima Hanum had a shining baby boy. Mahmoud Effendi's maturity in his childhood astonished everyone around him. People in his village named their children Mahmoud in the hope that they too would be like him. At the age of six, Mahmud Effendi memorized the Quran under the supervision of his parents. When he was still young, Mahmud Effendi traveled to Kayseri for the sake of Islamic studies and took some lessons, like Arabic and Persian languages, from Tesbih Jizadeh Ahmad Effendi, who was an esteemed scholar in that region. After remaining in Kayseri for a year, he returned to his home village off and studied the recitation of the Qur'an from Mehmet Rüştü Aşık Kutlu Hoca Efendi, the most renowned Qur'at scholar of that period. Mahmud Efendi learned the sciences of rhetoric, Islamic theology, the Islamic law, principles of Islamic jurisprudence, and other Islamic sciences by Çalekdi Hacı Dursun Feyzi Efendi, the senior professor of Suleymaniye Medrese who was a distinguished and specialized scholar at the intellectual and rational sciences and transmissive sciences. Mahmoud Effendi received his diploma with perfect appreciation when he was just 16 years old. Bandarma City In June 1952, Mahmoud Effendi went to Bandarma, a sea town of the Marmara, for his military service. It was during this time that he met his spiritual guide, Sheikh Ali Haidar Ahasavi and Nakshibendi El Halidi. Sheikh Ali Haidar Effendi was the worthy scholar and the Hoja of Presence for the last four Ottoman sultans and the Mufti of four orders in the Islamic religious law. Ali Haidar Effendi's Sheikh, Ali Rza Bezaz Effendi, who had been buried in Bandarma, had informed Ali Haidar Effendi, who was at his dervish lodge in Istanbul at the time, through spiritual means about Mahmud Effendi, commanding him, Come to Bandarma immediately and take possession of your trust. After meeting him, Sheikh Ali Haidar Effendi had shown a great deal of interest in Mahmud Effendi, and he had great affection and respect for this younger man. Those around Sheikh Ali Haidar Effendi, occasionally they would ask, Why do you give such value to a soldier you do not even know? Ali Haidar Effendi replied, by the protection of Allah, no sin has yet been recorded in his book of deeds. Mahmud Effendi completed his military service in 1954 and was then inaugurated as an official imam of Ismail A Mosque in Fatih, Istanbul. On August 1, 1960, Sheikh Ali Haidar Effendi, after a long life of serving Islam, obtaining knowledge and spiritual guiding followers, departed from this world to the world of eternity. He had trained Mahmud Effendi as his successor and had passed on his spiritual entrustment to him. A new era with glorious responsibilities began in Mahmud Effendi's life after the death of his Sheikh Ali Haidar Effendi. He was busy working with the community as an Imam as well as being involved in the Islamic education of the students and duties of spiritual guiding. Many students of wisdom, particularly Imams, clerics, and Muftis took lessons from Mahmud Effendi. Sheikh Mahmud Effendi always encouraged people to seek education, implement wisdom, and aim for goodness. Many statesmen visited him and paid special attention. Mahmud Effendi advised many bureaucrats as well as many other people, both officials and non-officials. Mahmud Effendi has explained Islam to governors and political leaders such as Turgut Özal, Nejmettin Erbakan and Recep Tayyip Erdogan. While speaking to them, 
He only informs them of the commands and prohibitions of Allah. He has never asked for any form of worldly benefit for himself or for his community. Under heavy circumstances, one in which the recitation of the Quran in Arabic had become a very difficult task, we can see that Mahmud Efendi's achievement of educating thousands of hojas, both men and women, and tens of thousands of students, is becoming the leader of millions of men with beards and women with burqas in such a short period of time, that is, in 40 or 50 years, is truly remarkable. During the continuous conflicts between the right and left-wing groups, prior to the coup of September 11, 1980, Sheikh Mahmud Effendi told the people who came to him saying, Let's perform jihad, that it is our duty to revive people by enjoining the good and preventing the misdeeds. It is not our duty to kill people. He tried to calm the people and was successful to a great extent. Sayyid Muhammad Alevi al Maliki, one of the greatest scholars of the Islamic world and one of the greatest defenders of the Ahli Sunnah, visited Sheikh Mahmud Effendi in his lodge in Istanbul several times and he said about Mahmud Effendi, I have seen many communities all over the world. Some of them give importance to wisdom and lost Sufism. Some of them give importance to Sufism and lost wisdom. But Mahmud Effendi and his community is one of the exceptional communities that practices and perpetuates wisdom through practice, the religious way with the mystic way. An internationally known Islamic scholar, Muhammad Ali Es-Sabuni, became Sheikh Mahmud Effendi's follower, saying, No doubt, Sheikh Mahmud Effendi is the Sheikh of not only Turkey, but of the entire world. Dark Hands, Dark Desires Huzur Ali Murad Olu Hoca Effendi On the mid-morning of May 17, 1998, Mahmud Efendi's son-in-law, Khuzr Ali Muratolu Hoja Efendi, the Imam of Chukurbostan Mosque, and an esteemed scholar, was shot and made a martyr at the Ismail A Mosque while teaching a lesson. Bayram Ali Öztürk Hoja Efendi On the morning of September 3, 2006, Bayram Ali Öztürk Hoja Efendi, an imam and leading figure amongst the congregation, was stabbed and made a martyr in Ismail A Mosque during prayers, following one of his regular sermons on Hazret Imam Rabbani's letters. Although Mahmud Efendi was immensely saddened by both of these unfortunate incidents in his mosque, he responded to the condolences of the congregation with the words, May the entire Islamic world grieve. Hundreds of thousands of people gathered at the Fati Mosque for their funeral prayers, which were performed in total silence and with great calmness, without outburst or agitation. This is enough to demonstrate the extent of Mahmud Effendi's manners, courtesy, and patience. June 2009, Damascus, Syria. The celebrated city of Damascus, worthy of the word glory, a place of science and learning for centuries. Glorious Damascus has welcomed a special guest and shares this beautiful peace with his visit. In a world where chaos and stress is on the rise, His Excellence, a shining sun in Islam, the protecting star of Ahl Sunnet, His Excellency, Sheikh Mahmud El Naqshibendi El Mujeddidi El Khalidi. <laughs> وفي خلق ولا يدانه في علم ولا كرم مولا يا صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم and in a blessed meeting organized in his honor by the venerable scholar Hussam Din Farfur, he came together with eminent figures and esteemed scholars in Damascus, such as Abdul Razak El Halebi, Muhammad Adib El Kalas, and Ramadan El Buti. Images of these esteemed ulema gathered in his honor were broadcast all over the world through media and the internet. Now the entire Islamic community wants to know him better. وحن إلا الله قد شدت عزائمهم 
وحبلهم بحبال الله موصول العلماء لهم جاه ومنزلة ووجههم عند مولى الفضل مقبول العلماء لهم جاه ومنزلة ووجههم عند مولى الفضل مقبول العلماء لهم جاه ومنزلة ووجههم عند مولى الفضل مقبول On October 24, 2010, approximately 400 renowned and respected members of the scholars came from 43 countries to meet in Istanbul. They were all in agreement that Mahmud Effendi was the Mujaddid of the century. By declaring that, they presented to him an Outstanding Service to Humanity Award. The president of the International Union for Muslim Scholars, Yusuf El Kardavi, stated about Mahmoud Effendi that rewarding the scholars is a beautiful Sunnah act, and this year a Muslim Turkish scholar is to be rewarded. He has carried out many works to educate his people in the faith, taqwa, good morals, and respect for people and knowledge. This Rabbani scholar is the virtuous Sheikh Mahmoud Effendi en Nakshibandi. He is a Sufi and Hanafi scholar. However, he is not one of the people who spread superstition, vanity, innovation, or aberrations. On the contrary, he firmly adheres to Allah's book and the Prophet Muhammad Mustafa, peace and blessings be upon him. The Mufti of Lebanon, Akkar, Usame er rifai spoke in the name of all the scholars. Acting as principal on my own behalf, I speak in the name of the worthy scholars who have chosen me as their spokesman on commission. Upon the invitation of the Higher Islamic Education Institute of Hyderabad, India, we have assembled here to reward an honorable scholar and a sublime member of the Ummah. This sublime personage has performed a magnificent act from our ancestors, combining the present day with our deeply rooted history. Instead of writing a few books, he has inscribed his words on the people. This personage is a mobile book that ensures Allah's judgments on the earth. This light upon light has not only discovered the true path, but also provides guidance to the path for others. He reflects all the beauty that is within him onto humanity, and by ordering good and forbidding evil, he has hoisted the standard of the truth and has helped to form people who carry this light to every area. This personage is none other than my master and elder, His Excellency Mahmoud Effendi El Nakshibendi El Mujeddidi El Khalidi, a sublime scholar of purity and taqwa, one who protects Allah's book, one who embraces the Sunnah of the Prophet, who combines the Sharia with the truth, who is imbued with the Sharia and the truth who continuously says, My Lord, you are my sole intention, and my sole responsibility is your consent. May Allah protect and watch over him. May he make his breath continuous upon us. May Allah allow him to enrich us with his blessings and help. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, stated that Allah will send a scholar at the beginning of every century to renew the Ummah's religion. Thus, I state that at the beginning of the 15th Hijri, the 21st Gregorian century, as the result of research and in keeping with the truth, that our master, Mevlana Sheikh, Mahmoud Effendi, and Nakshibendi, and Mujaddidi El Khalidi, carries all the necessary qualities of resurrecting and reforming the Ummah, that is of being a Mujaddid, the reviver. This individual, as one who combines his words and actions, something that is essential, must be the person to renew the religion of this Ummah at the beginning of this century. In April 2011, 
he performed a spectacular Umrah, together with over 50,000 of his followers and lovers. Something like this had not been witnessed for centuries. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك ما شاء الله سبحان الله ما شاء الله Dünyada ve tedbirde ve mahşerde çok bir zorluklarla karşılaşacaksınız. Altından çıkamayacağınız işlerle karşılaşacaksınız. Benden yardım isteyin. Namazla ve sabırla. Ben sabredenlerle beraberim Allah'ım. Diğer ayet geriye destekliyorlar. Bunu onun yaştaki bile tut. Doğadım bana kabul edeyim sizin için. Bir hayli şerifinde Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem Yenzihi Rabbuna tebareke ve teala Külle leyle cizilâ semâ-i kimyâhîn yebkâ sizin leyi ahd Ve dur men yedûn fe estegîbele Ve men yes'elni fe ufiyehu ve men yes'elni fe ufiyehu Yani her gece gecenin üstü dışıda gittiği kalınca Mevla-ı Teala ve tefeddes hazretleri Birinci kat semaya huzur buyurup Buyurun ki Doğadan var mı kabul edin Bir şey İslam var mı vereyim Mağfiret İslam var mı mağfiret edin Bu haberlere dayanarak Mevlana İsteyeceğiniz şey evvela Kur'an'ı güzel ihsan edin ya Kur'an'ı güzel ihsan edecek. Amin! Kur'an'ı güzel ihsan edecek. Amin! Mahmud Efendi's sermons, which have been given regularly over the years, have been collected and archived by the followers. As a result, six volumes have been published. Mahmud Efendi has given sermons for over 50 years, on every day of the week. When we consider only the number of sermons for women that have been recorded regularly over the last 10 to 15 years, it is obvious that the entire collection of sermons will reach a hundred volumes. The most original and beneficial work of Mahmud Efendi is the work of translating the Quran to the Turkish language, named Quran Mejid. This work, prepared by an academic committee that is headed up by Mahmud Efendi, remains faithful to the Quran down to the smallest detail. Another voluminous work by Mahmud Efendi is the interpretation of the Quran in Turkish, named Ruhul Furkan. This interpretation was combined by an academic committee led by Mahmud Efendi. This process still continues today. Sheikh Mahmud Efendi has established various religious, social, and charitable organizations and foundations, such as the Mujeddit Mahmud Efendi Foundation, the Marifet Association, the Federation of Marifet Associations, and the Ehli Sunnet Vel Jamaat Confederation to offer a much better service to Islam and all of humanity. His organizations and foundations give service in education, culture, scientific research, health, charity, national and international social organizations. His nearest service team publishes monthly a scholarly and cultural magazine named Marifet. Sheikh Mahmoud Efendi is keen on developing relationships and cooperations 
especially between Muslim people and countries, and wants a peaceful world. Today, Sheikh Mahmoud Effendi, the Mujaddid, has millions of followers and lovers all over the world, and he is the most eminent figure at the advancement of Islam. Lovers from all corners of the world continue to visit the humble abode of Mahmoud Effendi in Chavush Basha, Istanbul, which he named the Call to Religion Building. <laughs> Come on.